According to Sarah reports, as you know, Sarah reports, they make sure they dig deep. And they reported this. How ex Abia governor Teodio Oji withdrew 500 million every month for eight years from state funds. This is not, this is not the first time that politicians will be doing this, particularly the ones in the state, as they have a huge chance where they can dig their fingers into the same um, story was attributed to Saraki of Kwara State when he was a governor. In fact, his father was a governor. He became a governor. They did the same thing. He took a lot of money from the state coffers and he used this to buy personal properties for himself all over the Federation and, of course, abroad. These are people that they've been able to benefit from this loot and corruption in Nigeria and their parents sent them abroad. They have British citizenship. They schooled abroad. They saw how the system worked. But Nigeria, like I say, is just a business center for the greedy British monarchy and also a business center for the same group of very wicked people that we have and we call them politicians. The commission said the former governor started the monthly withdrawal when he was chief of staff to convicted former governor of the state, Oji Uzo Kalu. Now you can see the connection. Now the reason I bring out this is to let everybody know that at the end of the day, aside the not being non-productive, tying down the south of Nigeria, aside that the country itself has expired, aside that some people are blind and they've, they've decided to remain um, blind and they will never see any reason why Nigeria should never exist any longer. Aside all of this, there is something that is very important and this is a cancer. It has eaten very deep. This is so endemic. This is a subterranean inimical activities of many people and we simply call this looting corruption stealing they are just thieves all the other names makes it look like maybe it's a former or a better or higher way of stealing it is stealing stealing is stealing they are thieves they are common thieves it's just that this time around they have been given a position they found themselves in a position and they use the opportunity of that position to steal and probably people will look at them and think they are much better than that of a thief that stole maybe um, broke into your house and stole your money is the same with these people the same attribute the only difference is that they steal so much and you see them as your lord as your god the economic and financial crimes commission has revealed out theodore oji uh, like i said he withdrew 500 million from the state account for eight years now imagine how much 500 million that is the money that they are talking about now not to talk about some other monies that have disappeared 500 million every month for eight years that is what um he did and you know a lot of them are involved in this all majority of in fact let's say all of the governors the senators all of them that's why a senator can afford to have expensive automobiles packed all over his garage and he has 20 of this it shows how stupid they are because automobiles will lose value but of course they have properties also so they need these to to, to prove to people that they are rich and to cover the eyes and faces of people and people will call them um, babasa or gasa not understanding not thinking within themselves that the money that this man is using is my money what a shame. You will realize that people will fight you when you take their money, but they cannot even reason properly to fight the criminals that have stolen their past, stealing their present, and already digging their hands into their future. And this is a Biafra, and this is an Igbo man. And that's why when I look at it, it's a little bit complex. I say, if we are pointing fingers just at the north, like I do say, yes, they are a major problem. I'm not ruling that out. But then what about the corruption that we need to deal with in ourselves, within ourselves and open up our eyes rather than being comfortable when your own kinsmen, your own tribe, your own, either it's a Yoruba man, either it's an Ausa, whatever it is, when you are comfortable when they are looting your present, your past and the future, do not expect a better life even when you break. You have to take a stand against this because, come on, for crying out loud, the, imagine 500 million naira and that is just a little of it they've not even come up with major um you know money that they've looted the commission said the former governor started the monthly withdrawal when he was chief of staff like i said efcc has been looking into various financial malfeasance of og following a petition by an anti-graft group fight corruption save nigerian group 
It was alleged that the various withdrawals were diverted to personal use. Now, he's not the first person. Military personnel from the north, Aousa Fulani's the marginal Abacha look. These ones are just um, drops of water compared to what Abacha stole. And the ones that are still alive, the generals that are still alive, Babangida is still alive, Obasanjo is still alive, and majority of them, they are still alive. This is just a drop, a drop of water compared to what they have been stealing and what these people are still stealing. It's just a drop of water. But then, we are not going to close our eyes and say, oh, let us not talk about this one because of Babangida. The truth of the matter is this. None of these people are affecting your life positively. They steal the money for themselves. Some of the money are you know, kept somewhere in Europe, in some houses, in some places all over Africa, and they die. In fact, sometimes they forget that the money they stole is even kept in that place and the money goes you know decays and no one even knows where the money is because they will never tell um, their families tell everybody where they hide this money now it was alleged that the various withdrawals were diverted for personal use the amount the investigation revealed was aside uh, was the money that was kept aside for for the security funds expended on the nigerian police nigerian army Department of State Service, Navy, and etc. Purchase of security equipment and vehicles for agencies. This is where the money all came from. You know, it's a, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing when you see many. It's like no one is answerable to nobody. Everybody does what they do, what they want to do once they get into that position. And they've been able to use religion and some other, you know, very funny um, brainwashing. And people will not see this. That is what I frown at. I don't care if you are Biafran. I don't care if you are Odudua, Anago, or whatever you are. The point is that there is something that is affecting everybody. It's affecting you if you are in the north, affecting you if you are in the south. It doesn't matter what village you are from. It affects you if your local government chairman, your kinsman, your brother, your relative, your governor, your senator, and the rest of those people, if they will loot you blind, they still your past, still your present, and still your future. Now, it has nothing to do with Biafra. It has nothing to do with Odudua and all of that. Now, question is this. Will break in a way solve all of this? No. Break away is one major step so that we can, you know, come down to the drawing table and see what is on ground. Then secondly, and before then, like I do say, let us all be, you know, a revolution and I reflect. Let us take each step do not leave one aside and say, oh, it's all about, don't let us miseducate ourselves and think Aousa man is the only problem that you have. No, that's your brother, like Theodore Oji, who's your, uh, Theodore Oji, his first son called Chinedum, is your enemy. Theodore is your enemy. Buari is your enemy. All of these people in the South is whatever name you want to call them, they, they, the ones that take bullion vans from one point to the other. They are your enemies. So if there is Odudua Republic or Anago Republic or Yoruba Republic or whatever Republic, Niger Delta Republic, Middle Belt Republic, whatever, these groups of people, these saboteurs, these wicked people, they will still be around. And they have a lot of money, don't forget. And they've amassed a lot of money that they can, you know, when people are hungry and you just throw some few things at them, they are so happy. And they will always get people that will try to disabilize the new nation. The reason I'm bringing this forward is for us to make, take note of these names and these people. And do not be deceived when the new nation comes. When Biafra comes, these people will be around. So, like I said, the investigation, according to sources, was extended to his family members. So, ascertain their link and culpability in this issue. You know, his first son, Chinedum. You know, he's currently the speaker of the Abia State House of Assembly, and his brother are now uh, the frequent guests at the EFCC headquarters where they are explaining what they know about the fraudulent withdrawals. One thing I now say about this regime is that money is taken back and it goes out of the back door. So we are not going to say, oh, this administration is an administration that is pulling out corrupt officials, corrupt politicians, and all of that. No, the money is getting missing from behind again. So we cannot call this transparent. This is not transparency. The agency has traced 100 slush accounts to Chinedum. Over 145 accounts used to coordinate the transfer of one. Now, I want you to take note of this. If you don't understand this in, in Naira, I want you to do the exchange rate. I'm going to call out the money. A 150 billion Naira. Check that in euros. Check that in dollars. Check that in whatever currency or wherever you are. Check that in that currency. They have linked these to Oji's family. 
150 billion naira. Check what that is. That is just for eight years, and they are still stealing. Some of the funds illegally transferred by the family also alleged in the petition include aside the 150 billion naira, 383 billion naira again revenue from federal accounts, 55 billion naira excess crude revenue, 2.3 billion naira short P, 1.8 billion naira ecological funds. 10.5 billion loan from the First Bank of Nigeria through the Ministry of Chieftaincy and Local Government Affairs. Others are 12 billion naira Paris Club refund, 2 billion naira agriculture. See, they don't deal with millions no more for farmers and 55 billion ASO PADEC. That is A S O P A D E C funds. Photo World Industry Limited with GTB account number 20. I'm not going to call the rest of it. Was traced to Chinedum. The company received deposit of. 20 million dollars 20 million dollars same company with another account number in first bank of nigeria received a cumulative deposit of 362 million naira photo world has several other accounts with fbn the accounts and deposits are 84 mil 84 one, one is in 84 thousand dollar cash deposit between 2014 um 2015 another between 2012 2015 another account housed 342 million naira what a shame that is between november 2012 and july 2015 now they put another money 1 million 1.6 million pounds i'm talking of that currency the gdp account also um, housed another money 83 million naira 88 million naira between february 2009 to july 2014 now there is a company called exact construction limited also traced down to chinedum is believed to have no record of any construction work whatsoever in the country no company a company name without any work at all at all also that company received huge among us deposits in keystone bank the same keystone bank that someone close to Buari among the Daura clique bought Keystone Bank. Now, between October 2008 and February 2015, the company account number, uh, another company account number, a deposit of one, in fact, this, the, 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 what, the numbers behind this is so much. One billion naira. Now, the acting spokesperson of the EFCC, Tony Urilade, also confirmed that the Antigraph Agency was conducting an investigation on the financial crimes involving Theodore Hoji. Now, what I want to see is people seeing beyond tribe. Let us see beyond tribe here. Let us call a spade a spade. This money that has been stolen, even if the person is from your state, is your brother, is an Igbo man, and you think that man has stolen more, a Yoruba man has stolen more, you are the one suffering. And their family gets stronger and bigger. And they keep on with this. These are wicked set of people. Tomorrow they will tell you that there is underdevelopment in the eastern part of Nigeria and the cause of this is the north, is Buari, is not making the bridge and people will get food. It's time for us to re-educate ourselves and see the canker worm, the cancer that is eating deep from our own corner. Like they do say, charity begins at all. This group of people, they are as wicked as Buari. This year, they are as wicked as any other northerner that you did. In fact, they are worse than Boko Haram. Because Bokwaram, you know they strike. But these people strike you so silently. And yet, they play you the tribal stories and say, Oh, is Buari, is the North. What a shame. What a shame. Go to Abia State. It's one of the worst states. Go there. This place is full of criminals. I'm not saying, oh, because you are from Abia State. These criminals are all over the place. Theodore Oji, his sons and daughters, they have shown themselves to be thieves. They looted and rendered Abia State useless. What a shame. So I don't know what you want to say about this. If you want to come to play tribe, you are free. But would you be would you rather be more objective than subjective? Whatever it is, let us meet at the comment section below. And why are that? If you're not a member of this channel, we can grow it together by you tapping on the subscription button and the red notification icon bell below. It will alert you whenever videos are uploaded. And if you are already a member of this channel, I say a very big thank you for the support. Thanks for stopping by.